I test my test. What's up, everybody? It's all real here, and welcome to the beginning of Deus Ex Mankind Divided. If I'm not mistaken, the sequel to Mankind Undivided, which I think was the prequel game. I don't know. I didn't play the, the past Deus Ex game. I pretend like I have, and nor do I care to pretend like I have. I don't even play shooters that much, but this is going to be a treat for you guys, because like I said, you don't see me play shooters that much at all, so most definitely this is going to be something new for you. Let me turn down my game volume right down to like 28. I think you guys will still be able to hear it just fine. I just don't want it being over my commentary. I don't know what to think about this. Press the options button. I pressed X. So, what are options? Membership is free, sir. For each membership is a free service that allows you to access content such as interviews, blogs, giveaways, and more. You must be registered, a registered member to view some of the exclusive content for information. I don't give a damn about that. <laughs> Pin that shit on me. Subtitles. I don't know what's supposed to be on. Or, okay, I'm assuming this means it's on. I don't know. They should clear that up. Cause I don't. I don't really know. Like it's not a good sign. Right, this up a little bit right there. That's, that's um, HUD. But the, I'm guessing this means it's on. This is like the default setting. So. Well, okay, okay, so the green mean that it's on, so we're going to put the subtitles on. Uh, gameplay, all that's on. I'm assuming that means it's, it's on. Um, language. Of course, you know we want Italian. Of course, you know we want uh, Japanese. Yes, you want Japanese. No matter where's the Japanese subtitles. Oh, fuck you. Let's just start this damn game. I don't know what breach is. Uh, I'm not too sure about this due to the fact that I'm not uh, familiar. One, I'm not familiar with Deus Ex. Two, I'm not familiar with first person shooters. Three, um, you know, I know that games like this normally have a lot of copyright. Uh, you know, like there's a lot of potential strikes on like your content like this I've dealt with enough copyright strikes in my life I hope that doesn't happen but if it does obviously you should already know I'm not going to bother with um no we're just going to enjoy the good story Okay, so none of these have crouch. Okay, R3 is crouch. Okay. I'm going to just go with Mankind Divided. I don't really understand everything. This is just like basic stuff. Yeah, let me just go with, uh, with Mankind Divided. You can enjoy Deus Ex Mankind Divided as a standalone experience. You can also relive the events of Deus Ex Human Revolution, which took place two years prior by watching a 12 minute recap video. Do you want to watch the recap video? Uh, yeah. For the sake of the story, let's just do it because I don't know any of this. So this takes place in Detroit.
she had to do was present her research to Congress. But the night before her big meeting, my security measures failed. A team of black ops mercenaries stormed into Sarah's headquarters, massacred the women inside. Three of the monks were heavily augmented in one of the tanks. Their mission? Take out Megan and her team. They tried to stop her. Their leader tossed her through a plate glass wall. Last thing I broke into Sarah's factory and found machinists working overtime on a top secret military augment called the Typhoon. Mm -hmm. And when I did, I found one of the so called purists next to it, wired for cerebral implants, trying to download its classified specs. Obviously, something more was going on. The AUG killed himself before I could question him. Sarah. So with the help of Frank Pritchard, Sarah said of cybersecurity, I did. Turns out a second hacker had been controlling the odds actions from somewhere outside. Pritchard and I tracked his signal through secret FEMA internment camp in Detroit. Hey. Turn this up a little bit more. TYM and grab a surveillance hologram off a server. I suspected Van Bruggen was hiding something when he told me this, but nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. Megan wasn't dead. She and her four best researchers had been kidnapped, spirited away somewhere while their kidnappers made it look like they were dead. Desperate to learn more, I confronted Zhao in her penthouse. She claimed to be a pawn in a bigger plan and hinted at a group so powerful it controlled global interests at a whim. Illuminati. She slipped into a panic room and hit the alarm, forcing me to make a very quick exit. I figured Zhao was lying. Part of her confession made sense. 
David Saran had been worried about his people. So worried, he'd required all of them to have subdermal locator devices surgically implanted. The GPLs would have been broadcasting the day of the attack. But Zhao sent a single call to Picus, the world's leader of global 24 hour satellite news. I turned their signals off. I needed to fly to Picus headquarters in Montreal. Eliza Kassan, Pikus Communications First Lady of News. Malik thought I was reaching when I told her Eliza was involved in this. The world's most famous news anchor, working with a mercenary hit squad. But when I confronted Kassan in her office, she freely admitted to jamming Detroit satellites the night Megan's team had been taken. That's some other shit right here, man. She's just been following her commands. I suspected she wanted to say more. But Black Op mercenaries showed up, we're gonna shut us both down. And just like that, the Eliza I've been talking to disappeared. The mercs were led by an augmented killer I crossed paths with twice before. Federova. A woman who'd made silence her best friend. She waited for me to track Eliza's transmission to a secret server room underneath the Pikus complex, then jumped me from behind. The wire bottom loop kind of just pop out like that. Sophisticated AI program, engineered to monitor data streams and control what people believe. Eliza told me the Mercs had brought in a humanity front doctor named Isaiah Sandoval to remove the scientist's implanted tracking devices while Detroit's satellites were down. She also told me to speak to David Sarah if I wanted to learn more. By the time Malik and I got back to Detroit, tensions between normal and augmented citizens had reached a flashpoint. Riots were breaking out in several cities. The UN was being urged to intervene. Seraph was trying hard to convince Hugh Darrow, the inventor turned philanthropist who'd once been a leading proponent of enhancement technologies, to help stop a possible regulatory vote. Seraph had a lot riding on Darrow. Megan's discovery would have given millions of people the chance to evolve beyond their normal human abilities. And at the same time, Catapulted Seraph Industries to the top of the Fortune 500. According to Seraph, Megan's kidnappers knew this and didn't want people evolving unless they controlled how it was done. He called his enemies Illuminati and urged me to keep searching. Mm -hmm. Determined to do so, I tracked down Sandoval via America's most outspoken augmentation opponent, Bill Taggart, Sandoval's boss and founder of Humanity Front. Sandoval admitted to operating on Megan's team when I confronted him, but said he hadn't removed their GPLs. He'd merely switched them to a different frequency. Pritchard was able to trace one of the signals to China. Malik and I immediately took off in pursuit. Unfortunately, the Illuminati were one step ahead. Ambushed. Shot out of the sky by Bell Teller Associates. Seconds after entering anxious airspace, Malik's piloting skills saved me. After a tense and bitter struggle, I escaped into Bar Hensha. The tracking signal I was following led straight to the triads, or more specifically, to the augmented arm of Tong Si Hung, leader of a gang of augmentation harvesters. Mm. Tong said they'd taken the arm off a corpse, which Bell Tower had left at their door. Meaning, one of Seraph scientists was dead. Maybe not the rest of them, though. Tong pointed me with port used for human trafficking and helped me slip aboard a Bell Tower ship. We were sailing to Rifleman Bank Station, a military base in the South China Sea. Bell Tower was holding kidnapped civilians as prisoners there and using them to perfect the Hyron project, a human computer interface that left most of its test subjects dead. My search for Megan would have ended then, if not for a mysterious ally named Quinn. In exchange for my help exposing Bell Tower, he slipped me aboard a second ship headed to Singapore and an Illuminati-run biotech facility called Omega Ranch. 
three of Seraph's scientists were there, forced by their captors to create a technology capable of remotely shutting down augmented abilities. Damn. Thanks to an emergency recall notice issued by the World Health Organization, millions of people all over the world already have the biochip installed. With the help of the scientists, I tracked Megan to a private section of the ranch. There, I ran into Yaron the Mir, the walking tank who put a bullet in my brain the first time we met. He'd teamed up with Zhao and was hoping to catch me off guard. Where's his penis? I found Megan in a suite belonging to Hugh Darrow, the billionaire philanthropist who Sarah had called on for help. Darrow had convinced her to go along with the biochip plan by promising to sabotage the tech. As she was explaining this, Darrow appeared in the global broadcast, telling the world that augmentations would be the death of mankind. Then he activated the biochips to prove his point. All over the world, augmented people flew into a killing frenzy. Darrow had betrayed everyone, and it was up to me to set things right. To do it, I had to reach Panchea, a massive installation in the Arctic Ocean. As I raced through corridors built by an all-augmented workforce, I saw death and destruction firsthand. By the time I shut down Darrow's broadcast, I knew the damage he'd done. Still, humanity's future remained unclear. How would the world react to this sabotage? Would people ever regain their faith in augmentations again? What would be the Illuminati's next move? Only time give us the answers. Mm. Beginning of all uh, of uh of this that was the previous game in a nutshell. I once thought I could save the world. Now look at it. In yet another augmented terror attack, two hundred and fifty one passengers aboard Sista Airlines flight four fifty one were killed. When an augmented passenger broke into the plane's cockpit and ruthlessly butchered its flight crew. <laughs> Details recovered from the black box recorder suggest that the man may have been suffering flashbacks to the AUG incident. That horrible day two years ago when augmented people all over the world flew into a psychotic killing spree. You think? The greatest loss of life in recent history. Sometimes, you just have to let go and embrace what you've become. Not gonna go all wonky on us now, Hansa. Are ya? Well, if I do, McCready, I guarantee you'll never see it coming. Agent Jensen! Am I gonna have a problem with you? No, sir. No reason to assume you would. Good. Because you are the only augmented operative on this team. And I intend to make good use of you. Listen up, all of you. We've got a sandstorm barreling down our ass, and we can't afford to make mistakes. We're going after this man, an arms dealer named Shepard. He's ex Bell Tower, one of the special forces commanders who disappeared during the incident. And he's come out of hiding. That cannot be good. It's not. He's selling weapons and military grade augments to terrorists. This is Iran Singh, the undercover agent who lured Shepard out of his hole. Best you see Interpol's got. For three years, he's worked hard to get in tight with the Jin, an Iraqi smuggling cartel that's infected the Eastern Hemisphere like a plague. Last week, mm -hmm. our arms dealer sent a message to the Jin, offering to sell them a shitload of black market merchandise dirt cheap. They told Singh to handle a buy. They're not gonna like it when Interpol disrupts their party. Is things cover really that good? It is right now. We need to keep it that way. This is where the deal's going down. A half-finished high-rise hotel that's been abandoned ever since the incident. It's not a pretty picture inside. Let me guess. Most of the laborers were augmented with heavy-duty industrial rigs. So when the incident hit, 
and they all went schizo. Things got gruesome real fast, <laughs> and no one except for some homeless junkies have been inside the place ever since. So what's the plan, Director? Singh's meeting Shepard on the ground floor, inside the hotel's main atrium. He sent the bulk of his gin crew to the penthouse levels to secure a vantage point. I want McCready's team to take up positions overlooking the atrium and make the arrest. Jensen, you're going in solo from the roof. My objectives? Keep the gin from joining the party. As far as we can tell, only one route connects the atrium to the penthouse level, a halfway decent elevator shaft. Here. I want you to block access to it. Fine. Just cut me loose. Do you plan on relying solely on your augments for this one? I'd recommend taking a little hardware. Just to be sure. Lethal? Non lethal? Well, non lethal. We've got a UC in there. Might be easier to maintain his cover if he's not the only one still breathing when this is done. Smart thinking. Yeah, but if anything does happen to him, you'll be telling his wife. After you get out of the hospital, of course. You know you got a big Nike check on the side of your face, right? Wide spaces and high ceilings in there, but a number of tight and constrained rooms too. So it's a crapshoot, really. Well, I'm not looking to play dice with anyone in there. Give me something with distance. Your call. Less chance of being seen and compromising Singh that way. One last thing, Jensen. Singh said that Jin are using some sort of portable Wi-Fi device to boost communications. He's got a better chance of maintaining cover if you disable it. We'll keep an eye out for it. But aren't we on the clock here? You said there's a sandstorm moving in. There is, and we got the intel on this mission at the very last minute. So we're scrambling a little. If it comes to it, your number one priority is keeping the gin out of that atrium. Copy that. Time to put away your happy thoughts, gentlemen. We're approaching the target building. You're up first, Jensen. Let's do this. Right. Let me see if I can pause this. I can, alright. Good, good. 